here we go. So I just want to start by uh, acknowledging the transitioning of my mother and also I just learned that Phil's uncle also passed. So um, grateful that we can hold each other during these challenging times and, um, and know the truth that there is no death and that um, our family members, friends, those who've gone before us, um, they're only a conversation away that we may not see them in physical form anymore. Um, yeah, so I'll start with that. I'm gonna place my hands on my heart. Take that deep breath of love and gratitude. So grateful for this time to come together with this beautiful community. Grateful for the way that we love and support and hold each other up. Grateful for Penelope who was willing to lead last week for me. We're so grateful that we have these teachings from A Course in Miracles and that we are willing to open our hearts and minds to understanding them fully so that we may live them in every moment of every day, putting into practice what we're learning. And we're grateful for our willingness to practice every day so that when challenging any challenges come up in our lives we can easily and effortlessly remember those teachings remember the practices that we've been using and apply them to what we're experiencing in our life so that there is no way that anything but peace can reside in our hearts and our minds we're grateful for the technology that allows us to come together and for all of our earthly and heavenly helpers, loving and supporting us, guiding us, bringing ease and grace into every aspect of our lives. We're grateful that we can share the blessings that we are and the blessings we receive with everyone, with Mother Earth, with all humanity, because we are one with them. In grace and divine gratitude, we let it be, and so it is. Amen. Nope. More folks in that room. Okay. So I'm going to start us off. Um, I'm going to read towards the end of paragraph one, all of two, and the beginning of three. Um, because I felt like that kind of summarized the whole section of sin versus error. So sin calls for punishment as error for correction. And the belief that punishment is correction is clearly insane. Sin entails an arrogance, which the idea of the proclamation that attack is real and guilt is justified, it assumes the Son of God is guilty and has thus succeeded in losing his innocence and making himself what God created not. Thus is creation seen as not eternal and the will of God open to opposition and defeat. Sin is the grand illusion underlying all of the ego's grandiosity. For by it, God himself is changed and rendered incomplete. The son of God can be mistaken. He can deceive himself. He can even turn the power of his mind against himself, but he cannot sin. There is nothing can do that would really change his reality in any way, nor make him really guilty. For all the wild insanity inherent in the whole idea of sin, it is impossible 
for the wages of sin is death, and how can the immortal die? We can't do anything that will remove us from the innocence that we are. We can't do anything. Linda, I am so sorry. Uh, to get my video, I'm going to have to leave, but I can just block myself out. Okay, honey. Should I just block myself out like that? Like... No, go ahead and leave and come back. Oh, wait, I think you're coming in. There you are. <laughs> there you are. Hi, Linda. Hi, sweetie. Yeah. Hi, everybody. <laughs> All right, so does anybody have anything to, any comments or anything they'd like to share? I saw so, Carla's hand and then Deborah and then Phil. Okay, so as you read that, Linda, I mean, I'm trying to find this line I wrote down about sin being irreversible. I mean, you're trying to say we can't, we're incapable of sin, so it really doesn't exist, and that's why we can call ourselves sinless. Exactly. Yeah, that, I think the second um, sentence in paragraph one, for error can be corrected and the wrong made right, but sin, were it possible, he's saying were it possible, but it's not possible, would be irreversible. There's okay, no such so, thing as yeah. sin. So that's why that line threw me off. And um, I mean, the whole word of sin kind of triggers me because, you know, it comes back to that traditional interpretation of sin that we've all been through too many times about related to the commandments and oh, you know, yeah. punishment and all this stuff and burning in hell and that kind of crap. Yeah. And that, that's exactly what it is, <laughs> Deborah. It's crap. <laughs> it's total crap. <laughs> and to me, air is more something like if something's, somebody says something to me and I misinterpret it and, and way off track and, you know, it wasn't even what the person meant. That's more like air. But sin seems to me like it's maybe a little more serious. Yeah. And it, for me, it feels like as I read this, that the word sin and all that, all the meaning that is around it was basically made up by, um, those who wrote the dogma so that it would make us feel guilty and small and um, that we would be easily manipulated by them. And it's worked well, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, but we're waking up. So <laughs> look out world, here we come. Yep. Thank you, Deborah. You're welcome. Yeah, Miss Carla and then Phil. Well, then now I'll pull on that. It's, what that dogma seems like is the people, it's, it's because they believe Diga. And in the seventh paragraph, the first line, there is no stone in all the egos embattled citadel that is more heavily defended than the idea that sin is real. So, I don't want this to come from ego. It really comes from love. That we choose. That in the in the world, some human, some some spirit embodied as a human being had having a human experience, believed the ego thought that sin was real and maybe they maybe they wanted to control or manage or whatever i i don't know i don't really it doesn't matter why they chose it what they just what they chose and that, and that doesn't matter because that's they're still innocent even though they chose that and if I believe them or don't believe them, so am I. I. We're one. You know, it can't be any different. 
So that's the ten, I believe, the sin versus evil, sin versus error. So what am I choosing? From what is the motivation of my choices? Am I aligning with spirit or ego? The true self or the false self? What people think is real or the invisible? You know, the, the, they look at things and they go, oh, that's real because they believe the appearance and the meaning the mind gave it. And isn't that all we're doing when we believe we're sinning, we believe that we've done, we've chosen, we've made, we're using our God power, the essence, the truth of us to believe. That is the real power of this world is belief. What you believe becomes true for you. If you believe in the sin, if you agree with the, you call it dogma, whatever you want to call it, whatever you believe, whatever you align with is what becomes true for you. But we can choose again. We can. And when we choose again, doesn't change anything except our belief. It all times back to that. So thank you. Phil and then Caroline. Uh, thanks, uh, Linda, and thanks, Deborah and Carla and Thanks for everyone being here. And I really want to acknowledge you, Linda, and the prayers you said. Um, because I woke up this morning feeling different than yesterday because yesterday the whole thing was too fresh and I was like asking God, you know, what, what is this for when this person has been so helpful had to be hit by coronavirus and had to be all by himself with no family in the hospital. And I, it was really, I, I struggled with the whole thing. And what I want to do is really acknowledge your prayers and even your mom for being part of your life and breathe. And this morning I have woken up feeling that I want to celebrate, celebrate that these people were in my life. And I want to really thank you, Linda, for sharing part of your mom's life with all of us, her journey, because it has touched all our lives. And she, she, lives on as much as I know that my uncle lives on. And I want to really celebrate their life rather than mourn their disappearance. But you know, it's okay to sometimes feel sad. It doesn't mean that. And that's the space I am at. And this reading really brought something for me. And I, I'm on a on paragraph eight, would you not rather that all this be nothing more than a mistake, entirely correctable and so easily escape from that, that its whole correction is like walking through a mist into the sun. And this whole thing for me has been uh, like, you know, it just, came to me like I was thinking about it and sin is like the whole thing of the prodigal son and the choice, choice is a big word which continues 
we can choose heaven or we can choose hell. And it is the choice that we get to make as if we even take the prodigal son, he had to choose just to come back. He, didn't, he had to do nothing more. And uh, I thought for myself, you know, so every time I choose judgment, I choose my attachment, I choose fear, I choose playing small is where I am choosing to be in that place of seeing myself as sinful rather than seeing myself as, okay, let me try this. Let me make the mistake because it's correctable. And let the light that is being given to us, let allow it to shine whatever shape or form it comes. And this, this was really empowering to me. And like I get to choose the type of journey I want to have. I could choose my day yesterday or I can choose a totally a new day today. And I'm so grateful. I'm really grateful. Thanks for listening. I know I've been rambling, <laughs> but I'm, I feel like really energized with this whole thought that just came to me, you know, especially when I've been struggling. And I said this morning to my family, let's celebrate his life. Let us come together and just have a meal and talk about him. However, he has impacted us negatively, positively, it doesn't matter. Let's heal together and let us set ourselves free, not him, you know. So, yeah, thank you. I have a question that's not related to today's reading, but it's related to the text. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm asking for a little clarification. So I restarted the res lessons recently. I think I'm about on 17. So it's talking about, you know, our, our thoughts are meaningless and what we see is meaningless and all that because of our thoughts. So it, t it talks about how, you know, usually in our world, the way we explain it is we look at something and that creates a certain thought. But the text was saying that it's kind of backwards. That doesn't work that way. Um, that it's more like we have this belief and the thought, and then that creates what we see. So I'm just trying to wrap my head around that. I know I've read this concept before, but if somebody could give me a concrete example, I think it would be really helpful to me. Yeah, absolutely, Deborah. Uh, and first, I want to acknowledge, Phil, thank you for your, your beautiful share and uh, honoring and celebrating your uncle's life with you, absolutely. And Caroline will get to this next. Um, so I can say um, regarding your question, um, one experience that I had uh, just over the course of this past week and a half with what was going on with my mother. So my, um, because of coronavirus and because my sister was the one that had my mother in her car to bring her to the emergency room that day. It was my sister that had to be in the hospital with her every day all day long and only her. She had no support from anybody else going through all of this. And it was, it was rough, it was really rough for her. Um, and it was, it's challenging for me as well because I couldn't be there to support my sister. I couldn't be there to see what was going on with my mom. Uh, I couldn't be there to talk to the doctors and all that. So that happened. And then we finally were able to get my mother home uh, by ambulance. Uh, by the time they finally got her there, she was not really coherent or with us um, she when we told her she was home she would say no I'm not and uh, pretty much the only things that we were able to understand from what she was saying was help me help me help me and please 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 and that went on for 
a good 12 to 14 hours. And my idea of what was going to happen once my mother got home is that my sister would go to sleep at her normal bedtime. And my son and I would take care of my mother through the night, which we did. But my sister, who had been not really supported for an entire week, having to watch my mother decline so quickly, her way of unwinding was to have six beers. <laughs> and first I thought to myself, this should not be happening. And if I would have wanted that thought, Deborah, I could have been totally ticked off at my sister, my poor sister, who had just spent an entire week all by herself watching our mother decline into her death, the death of her body. But I decided that I was gonna be like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to ride this wave with her. Um, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that my son is here to help with my mother. And we did finally, we're finally able to get a, a good combination of drugs, uh, of the drugs for her so that she was calm enough so that we could step away from her for a few minutes at a time. And, um, but my sister's one of those drunks where it's like, I love you, man. <laughs> so, um, and luckily because we're such a musical family, she had music playing. So we were standing in my mother's kitchen while she was drinking, um, singing along to Cat Stevens songs. And every once in a while, she would just say to me, thank you for taking care of me and just like wrap herself around me. And thank you for taking care of me when we were kids. And I could, you know, the whole situation, I could laugh at it. Um, I could cry with her. I was an angry with her because I felt like I had to take care of her and my mother at the same time <laughs> because I decided that I wasn't going to believe that thought that it shouldn't be happening the way that it's happening. So um, it could have been a completely different experience if I would have allowed myself to grab onto this thought that you know, she should be sleeping. She shouldn't be drinking. What the hell is she doing? <laughs> She's making this harder. You know, I, I could have gone there. I could have totally gone there. So anyway, so I hope that answers a little bit of your question, Deborah. Yes, thank you so much for elaborating on it. Yeah, you're welcome. Miss Caroline, for patiently waiting. Hi, <laughs> thank you. Um, Linda, thank you very much for your story. And I really enjoyed seeing the photos on Facebook. You look, you look a lot like your mom, which is good. And um, uh, Phil, my condolences. And Deborah and Carla, thank you for all, everything that you've been saying. Um, as you were all speaking, I kind of forgot what I was gonna say, but going back to sin, um, I think that, that well obviously ego plays a big part in this world and i think since way 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 back many many years ago especially in the churches um that they instilled sin that you're a sinner um you're going to hell and fire and brimstone and all that to keep people small to keep people in fear to keep them afraid and this went on for years and years and years, maybe right up until the present day. It's like we've, we've got this programmed into our brains. And um, last week, um, well, I recently, like about 12 years ago, I, I made a choice that was out of ego and it was really, really bad and there was terrible consequences. Um, time's gone by and things are better and I'm better, my mental, my emotional everything is better it's like I'm a different person and then last week I've well it's been about a month that I've finally at 53 years old I've discovered 
what I want to do with my life, <laughs> what really makes me happy, what calls to me. And I had this meltdown last week because I thought, oh gosh, this is going to be taken away from me too. It's not going to work. Oh no, I can't do it. It's, it's not going to work. This guy's going to cheat me and blah, blah, blah. I won't go into the story. But, and so I was crying and, and when I pray, I write it down in a notebook in my journal. Sometimes I'll say it out loud, but I, I usually write it down because I can express myself better. And um, I started crying and because I wanted this so much and not out of ego, but I wanted to, to, to do it for, for others, for myself, but in a, in a good way. And so fi today I found out that it is proceeding this project that I'm working on and the guy's legit and it, it's going to work. And so I can keep going. And I'm, I'm so happy because, you know, it's like, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, you know, what they there, it's not all dark, 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 dark. And, um, of course there'll be obstacles, but I can, I can push through the obstacles because I know I have the strength to do it. We all have the strength to do it when obstacles come our way. And, um, so that's all I wanted to say. And, um, I hope I didn't ramble too much, but thank you all. And I really appreciate this group. And um, just thank you very much, everybody. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> thank you, Caroline. I'm so excited you finally figured out what you want to be when you grow up. <laughs> yes, exactly. I know. <laughs> it took me about that long, too, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> awesome. Who else has something they would like to share? questions or comments. Uh, Leslie and you go. go ahead, Linda. Where are you at? Um, I'm like so sleepy. I better speak. So <laughs> sorry, I got up too early. Um, what caught my attention, I was looking at um, paragraph seven, you know, what a ride this paragraph is. There is no stone in all the egos in battle citadel that is more heavily defended than the idea that sin is real. The natural expression of what the son of God has made himself to be and what he is. To the ego, this is no mistake, for this is its reality. This is the truth from which escape will always be impossible. This is his past, his present, and his future, for he has somehow managed to corrupt his father and change his mind completely. Mourn, then, the death of God, whom sin has killed. And this would be the ego's wish, which in its madness, it believes it has accomplished. I mean, that's so succinctly, to me, harkens back to, you know, the obstacles of peace. And the fourth one being the fear of God, which is why I seem to be here in this nightmare, uh, separate, seemingly separate from my source. Um, and what, you know, the big, the most profound glue that holds me here is sin, the belief in sin. And yeah, underneath that is guilt bottom line. I feel guilty because I believe that I could be separate from my source, um, which is a lie, but here we are. So that, you know, obstacle, yeah. You know, I was thinking to these earlier comments in these earlier passages that were referred to, sin is, you know, sin is an error. It is a it just calls for correction. Um, 
I think the world at large on the level of form is very preoccupied with the right thought, the right action, the right behavior, the right, you know, and it's never about that with the course. The course is asking me to reevaluate the perception that I hold. And, you know, back to the word, the belief. Um, so it's not out there, it's in here. I have to remember, this is, this is the projector and that's the screen. And it's really about nothing is happening there, everything's happening here. I'm the maker of the movie. That harkens back to what Deborah was asking. You know, that's a description for me that works. Um, it is about thought. Um, perception makes projection. What a powerful little statement out of this book. It's always the case. So change my mind. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Linda. Yeah, it sometimes feels like it's so much more challenging than it really is. <laughs> I don't know why we fight it. Miss Leslie, and then I believe we have Mary Rhodes on the line after that. Hello, everybody. Linda, I just wanted to express my condolences to you and just say how courageous and kind-hearted and loving you are. And I'm sure it was not an easy journey not being in that hospital. That must have been a tough one. And I, I just so, I'm sure you can see how much you've grown since your father passed away. And yet, in a way, it was a totally different experience because his was so sudden. And your mom sounded like it was pretty sudden too, but not quite as sudden. So uh, it's a lot. I just want to let you know, I've been thinking about you and your family. And, it's, and I know that you know it's okay to cry when you want to cry and laugh when you want to laugh. And uh, yeah, I just want to let you know I love you and keeping you close to my heart. Thank you. Love you too, Leslie. And Bill, I just can't imagine how difficult that must have been for you too with your uncle in the hospital with COVID, knowing he was all alone. Because through all this, I've always like, that would be the worst thing that could happen. You know, it just, and is that true? I don't know. But I, I have so much compassion for you and your family too. I did not know that was going on. Um, it's a difficult time and I'm so proud of you for saying that out loud to your family. Let's celebrate his life. Let's talk about him. Because so many times when somebody dies, all of a sudden it's like, don't say their name, don't talk about them, don't express anything. And I've never understood that. So really my heart goes out to you for, for choosing to celebrate at least today. You know, like I love what you said about there's time for grief too. And, and it's just, man it's called living is moment to moment to moment in the presence you know just what's coming up and what can we not resist so that's all i wanted to share love you guys both and i look up to you both tremendously thanks so i just started thinking about and i know we've all heard this that sin means missing the mark that's what it means in hawaiian but um if that's true, if we take that concept, I mean, the way we turn it around is to change our mind about it, right? And change how we see it. Absolutely. I just happened to think, uh, probably Spirit gave this to me, separation is now, is sin. Anytime we think that we have sinned, in that moment, we are making separation real. So sin is separation is now. <laughs> and then the other thing I thought about, it kind of gets rid of that whole, I mean, so many churches focus on repentance and begging for forgiveness and everything. But, you know, if, if sin is non-existent, you don't need repentance. Right. Exactly. You don't need to have uh, somebody as a go-between between us and God. You know? Right. Good point. And usually that go-between is male. Have you noticed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. 
but that's okay. My mother used to tell me um, when I was a young uh, newlywed uh, stuff about, you know, let them think that it came, that it was their idea. <laughs> let the man think it was their idea because it makes them feel good. <laughs> So we can let them think that they're in charge, but we know, we know the truth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Deborah. You're welcome. Yeah. Miss Mary Rose. Yes. Hi, Linda. It's so good to hear you today. Yeah. Good to hear you too, honey. Thank you. And. <clears throat> My condolences to you about your mom. Um, yeah, that's that's uh, <clears throat> really, really kind of you and sweet of you to share about your journey. Um, and um, I also want to tell you, I really appreciated that you were able to, even though you couldn't be here last week, you were able to get it set up and, and get Penelope in place to lead us and that we could meet when you weren't here with us. That was, um, I really, yeah, I just want to say thank you. That was um, such a sweet gesture, such a sweet action of you. Yeah, thanks, Mary. Um, it was uh, divinely appointed. <laughs> well, yay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, a couple other things I want to acknowledge Phil too and, and um, a shout out to condolences about the loss of your uncle and um, back to um, something you said today Linda about your sister and your choice when she was drinking and how you how you saw you know an ego choice um, Colin on one side and on another side, a higher choice for love, uh, you know, to to make a choice in the moment of which way you would travel that path. Um, it's, uh, it's similar to me in nature to what I was hearing Sonia Choquette describe. She, I've never heard her mention the course, but I think a lot of what she teaches about guidance is very in alignment with um, the course and power of love ministry um, uh, without having the specific course in her teachings. But she was talking about how, um, you know, some ways to uh, uh, release negativity and um, increase our connection to the flow of um, joy and love and wisdom. And um, uh, when she was summarizing it, she said, it's like, when we're doing those things, we're creating an energy field, like a boundary or energy field around us that actually sets up a barrier to the negativity coming in so that um, it may block it entirely, or at least it will block it some or decrease its its um, ability to get to us. And that it also, we're setting up that energy, it attracts the good to us. And I thought when you made that choice with your sister of how you were going to walk it when she was drinking, that you were in um, in one lens of you, you were setting up a boundary of, hey, I'm going to go the higher road. I'm going to go for love here. And uh, that was what you co-created. So um, thanks for sharing that today. And thank you. Linda, for co-creating with Higher Holy Spirit, this group that we have. Appreciate you very much. Yeah, thank you, Mary Rose. You're uh, welcome. Yeah, thanks. Nancy Gill. Hi, Linda, thank you. Whoops. So, can you hear me? Okay. Don't usually use these here. Um, I don't know how to say this, but this whole experience, um, listening, I haven't really put a lot of um, 
into this into the prayer but the, what the the um the expressions the prayers the asking for prayers and the way people have responded through this whole like week last couple of weeks that i've been i've experienced this as completely brand new loving thing that i've never experienced in my life um and i wanted to say like with mary rose i was so grateful for you ex sharing this experience with us that allowing me to, sh to, sh to be in your life so to speak with you and i see this the smile on your face now and I'm, this, this all i can express is um the, my takeaway sort of was the whole time you were like loving us you were like ministering to us um <laughs> and it's like you're, you're still doing it and it's like you're giving and giving and giving to us the love and love and love while your your mom is you know passing away and moving on and it was like i just said it's just this whole week has just such, been such a blessing um i've never experienced anything my, my life was completely like you know in the sin realm <laughs> the sin world <laughs> and there's sin is the in the what what you said about the whoever you know came up with the, the concept of sin whatever it was it's to control it's it's to control and i was totally controlled <laughs> by the person the per the go-between person doesn't matter whether it's a male or female, you know. Uh, and then you try to placate that person in order to get to God, right? So I just realized, put all that together. But I just want to thank you, and um, you're such a blessing to us. Um, um, I'm going to stop now. <laughs> you know, I can go on. Um, but thank you. Thank you, Linda. Yeah, thank you so much, Nancy Gale. I mean, I'm really here to live that I'm here to be truly helpful. And I have to admit that when I first got the nudge last Tuesday morning to um, reach out to Penelope to ask her if she would facilitate for me, my ego mind went, it's only an hour. It's one of your favorite things to do dur during the week. You know, just do it. It'll be fine. And I'm like, no, I got this nudge to reach out to Penelope and ask her to do it. And it was during that hour that you all were gathering that my sister was in uh, intense conversation with two different doctors, the urologist and the heart doctor. And she was able to um, call me on my cell phone and let me talk to my mother. And that wouldn't have happened if I would have been here with all of you. Um, so I'm so glad I listened to that nudge because my ego was like, no, I want to be with them. They're so much better, you know, <laughs> than sitting by myself. Um, so I'm grateful I listened. I don't know, Penelope, if you have any, like what it was like from, from your end when I reached out to you that you would like to add. Yeah, I think I did share a little bit last week. I mean, I just actually got in um, from teaching a, one of my Tai Chi classes. And, I, and because of the way that my phone is set up, it, I, I don't receive any messages. It stops me receiving any messages during my class because I'm playing music via my phone to, to a Bluetooth speaker. So to stop that being interrupted, my phone is completely cut off from receiving anything. So I tend to start getting the messages through when I step back in the house. And so I, I know by the sound if it's WhatsApp messages. And so the sound was going of the WhatsApp messages and I started to scan through them. And of course I was just most, for the most part, it's the power of love and it's the different groups I'm in. And so I, I saw then that, that one that was just from you and I was like a little bit curious. And then I have to say that when I read it, it was like, oh, I was freaked out. I was totally freaked out. Um, 
because yeah okay i've i have facilitated and i think i shared with you my concern was that i'd feel like i don't have that experience to facilitate when it's the acm group and because you're such an inspiration and it felt like and i think i did also say this before i started the recording last week it was like these are huge shoes to fill here and and so it did feel hugely daunting and it was interesting because as i was trying to formulate my message to you you were also typing something to me at the same time and so i carried on formulating my message and almost reached the end of it really not sure what to do but in my heart i knew i wanted to to support you even though i was freaked out i wanted to support you um and your second part of your message came through but i'd already reached that decision and i think i, I put something like oh gosh let's just go for it like kind of like what the hell it's like i'm either going to fall and burn you know or crash and burn or i'm going to come through it and yeah and it's it's interesting how th there was a part of me i have to say that afterwards not immediately afterwards was was kind of berating myself for feeling like i didn't do all that good with it um and i and yeah it it's one thing facilitating a group but when it's the course and i don't feel like I, I certainly don't feel like i can answer some of the questions that you get asked um like you do so yeah it's a, it's a huge learning curve and i'm still grateful that i did it absolutely grateful that I did it and I'm grateful because I was also fully aware that if I said no and you couldn't get somebody that could do it just like that you were pretty I think you were pretty much saying anyway you would need to cancel it and I didn't want to feel like I'd been part of that reason to cancel it so kind of like it was all good and when I got over that initial freakiness <laughs> It was perfectly fine. And the other thing to add is, I certainly could feel the love in the group being in that position. So, you know, thank you everyone that was, was on the call last week. And yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you so much, Penelope, for saying yes. I mean, I, I knew as soon as I asked you, I knew if I would have asked any one of you that, you know, because I know if it would have been reversed, I would have had that same like deer in the headlights, or if you're in Australia, kangaroo in the headlights <laughs> kind of experience going through me. And, um, and I also knew because this community is so loving and compassionate that they would support whoever was facilitating wholeheartedly and that the, the call would be carried by God. Um, and I listened to it as soon as I could, as, as soon as it was available for me to listen to before I even posted it to y'all. And I was like, oh my God, that was such a good call. So yeah, I, I want to thank you again, Penelope, for saying yes. And, um, and, uh, being a, a demonstration of what saying yes, even when you're terrified, uh, can do for you thank you yeah thank you linda and uh, it's pretty daunting actually because there's some people on the call here that i'm fully aware of you know i've been studying the course for a long time and are living the course as well not just studying it so yeah it is pretty daunting but thank you thank you for the opportunity yeah thank you well i would just like to um thank everyone for being here and I want to say, Penelope, you were flawless and just, it was so beautifully done with ease and grace. And it's interesting how our patterns and habits will tell us that we haven't done it uh, well enough. Uh, that's my experience all the time. So, uh, and I never even any felt any hesitation from your expression or your presentation. You just flowed so beautifully. Uh, and so thank you for saying yes. And Linda, um, I just loved what um, Nancy Gale 
the way she put together you're living a course in miracles and then these blips come in and that's where you could stop living a course in miracles but you don't and i mean through all these years i've listened to your shares and that your your mother's illness um or that she's been ill for many years and and so has your husband and some of the horrific experiences that we go through especially when hospitals aren't doing what they're supposed to do <laughs> and god bless hospitals and the people that work and they're so overly worked but i guess for me for you linda it's always been and i've shared this too your modeling of when you're living a course in miracles and the the blip or the horror comes forth and you share it and then you stand in that centered place and what a strong image and um, lovely model for all of us and i feel that everyone in this group does that um but you i've known you longer i know your history uh and i just see this um such beauty and um and so grateful that i can have a study group with you and everybody that's with us and um phil is my uh just a good long time freedom buddy and um i love her modeling too and we've become prayer partners and our calls are just so juicy and delightful and wonderful so to both of you you're you're i loved your coming together phil with your family for breakfast you know so sweet and open-hearted and thank you for sharing that with all of us and um who else to thank just everyone that's spoken it's just so lovely thank you and by the way i just get scared to death to speak but anyway um, i'm glad i did thank you me too, Robin. Because everything that comes out of your mouth is so brilliant. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad that I said yes to doing this group because I am by no means an expert on A Course in Miracles. And um, that is an excuse to never do it. And it did take me three years to get it together. <laughs> but I finally said yes. So. And Linda, you always have the answers. <laughs> you always do. Because I'll go now, what is she going to say? I'll be like, I'm stuck. And you always come through. So I'm just yeah, yeah. wanting to remind you of that. Yeah, I know it doesn't come through me. That's, I mean, it doesn't come from me. It comes through me. So that's, you know, uh, I'm here to be truly helpful. I'm here to represent him who sent me. I do not have to worry about what to say or what to do. Because he who sent me will direct me. I'm content to go wherever he wishes, knowing he goes there with me. And I will be healed as I let him teach me to heal. It can't be said any better than that. Yeah. I feel like we're the, the, this group of superheroes just like, but we don't realize that we're superheroes going out into the world and, and touching the lives of everybody that we come in contact with and, you know, and sprinkling fairy dust on them <laughs> by our actions and our words and our learning. Linda, go ahead. I think it's so interesting um, how we think uh, you know, we have to complete all 365 lessons. We have to do that year after year. And we have to have read the text, you know, front to back four times over. And then maybe we can go into the manual for teachers. When in reality, this is how we learn. And we are all already teachers of God. 
We're already there. We already know. And that's part of what's being, you know, the dialogue is like, there it is. Here it is. But there's this, you know, the ego puts this hierarchy, levels, you have more time, you know, whatever. The, uh, the meeting before the meeting, the meeting during the meeting, the, the meeting after the meeting, and the critic comes in, you know, all the, yeah. And that's, that's certainly the nature of the shenanigans of the ego, all on top of that. So, we are all teachers of God. We're already here. Thank you for saying that, because even with the reading last night, I kept, I, that little voice kept saying, oh, you'll never get this. You're going to have to do this over and over and over for years. And, and as you were talking, I wondered, could we say that the ego is cruel? I mean, would that be an appropriate descriptor? Yes. Yeah. The good news is we can't blow it. Yeah. We can't what? We can't blow it. We already know it. <laughs> okay. Like we can't get it wrong. Mm -mm. Yeah. Carla. Thank you, Linda. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> I feel it's really important to not judge ego. That's what it's doing all the time. And if you join it in judging, then, then you're in ego. So, and I, I know this has been a very, how, how challenging is it to go, I don't want to do that. It seems like a judgment, right? Yet, it's like, Love is a healer. How can you heal the ego, which seems to be so rampant in the world, right? Love it. Love and don't choose it, maybe, but love it in the choice. It's like sometimes it feels so challenging. So challenging. But that's what we're here for. We, uh, what I've heard is that people said, you know, like, oh, we're here for, we created a separation, we're here. See how, how you made the error in judgment. No, 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 no. We chose to become here, to embody, to show the world how to truly live from love and we're all doing that here by talking about it by sharing our experiences as as we all do say leslie and Don, or linda and and i even do it we're willing we are interested in how we choose and ego is it's really just a tool to show us what we don't want to choose, really. I knew it, somehow I got this awareness when I was 10 or 12, 14, I was young. I remember where I was exactly. I remember exactly every detail of the moment because that was, was a holy instant. The truth is, that's when I aligned with reality, I don't know that we can learn something from everything, even if it's how we don't want to be. And that's what ego is. It's showing us what we don't want to choose, even when we choose it. But it's up to us, and it's not bad. However long it takes to see that, it takes as long as it takes. So. I know we're at times so I go, I just wanted, I felt really important because I do this and I, I want, I, we speak what we want to learn. We teach what we, what's helpful to us. And I'm really interested in learning this and I forget, but I'm remembering now in this year. Thank you. Linda.
Thank you, Carla. Amanda and Penelope. Oh, good. I, I know we're at time, but I just wanted to say that, Carla, when you said that, that was great. I mean, it it is insidious and, you know, and the, the ego and how it, and it's annoying. Um, but I, I imagined when you were, when you were saying that, Carla, and it's so true and it's so good, um, juicy stuff. Um, but I imagined like this little, like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I can't even, I don't even know what the like form of the ego looked like, but I imagined this little <laughs> ego thing running around with the alarm, with the divine alarm clock. <laughs> And I was like, oh, yeah, like the ego's like, just like, we can love it because it's like, it's running up and going, look, divine alarm clock, divine alarm clock. You're not supposed to, you know, you know, ha ha ha, do this. But like, it's really just that divine alarm clock. And so we can love it because it shows us, um, it shows us the contrast of um what we what we what we want to where where we want to go with that and and how we can choose differently so um it brings up the thing to be healed and and that's mm -hmm. how we're gonna get there so that's how we're gonna walk each other home so thank you that was great <laughs> oh, sick. thank you amanda penelope and then nancy gail and then we really got to close out Okay. okay. Thank you, Linda. Just real quick. Um, thank you to everyone. It's been another beautiful call. Um, just the very, very last paragraph, uh, line three, perhaps you would be tempted to agree with the ego that it is far better to be sinful than mistaken. Yet think you carefully before you allow yourself to make this choice. Approach it not lightly, for it is the choice of hell or heaven. I just like, really like that last part because I feel like it's that really, like Jesus is cautioning us right at the end of this section and saying, you know, if you approach it lightly, the choice is hell or heaven. And what that's saying to me is if that I make the choice for hell, what I'm choosing is, I'm choosing, which is very clear, the illusion, but I'm also choosing the belief in death. I'm choosing the belief in the physical death every time I choose the illusion or sin. So thank you. Yeah, thank you for that clarification, Penelope. That was helpful. Nancy Gale, last words. Oh, I just want to say thank you, Carla, what, what you said. Um, I, what I took out of what you said, <laughs> the simple thing, the ego is a tool, use it. That's what I got. I thought, oh my gosh, how cool is that? Yep, exactly. Yep, I think we've lost Carla to another meeting, but <laughs> I'm sure she'll hear it in the replay. All right, so let's continue in um, chapter 19 uh, next week, the unreality of sin. Um, I think that'll help us again to get clarity around um, the fact that there is no sin, no such thing doesn't exist. And my reading today is uh, Pathways of Light Insights for lesson number 287, which is you are my goal, my father, only you. Only universal love is real. It is helpful to know that as I make individual forms real, it causes my awareness of universal love to disappear. The way back to you to love is to recognize that my replacements, all the forms of this world, all the forms of separation and individuality are but illusions. So my practice now is to look at every separate form and let the Holy Spirit show me its unreality. This is the purpose for time now, to see all the forms of separation, the barriers to love for what they are. The Course calls this forgiveness. The Course helps me understand that all these forms of separation are really forms of grievance. They are forms of rebellion against God's oneness. Today I would practice letting my grievance against oneness go and open my mind 
to all the Holy Spirit to dissolve every form of separation that is blocking my awareness of love's oneness. In this way, the Holy Spirit will show me one by one that everyone is really universal love. As I repeat this process, it will gradually sink in that I am only universal love and nothing else. Universal love is my only goal. It is my source and all that is real. Recognizing this is my practice today. In another lesson, we are told God is but love and therefore so am I. So this lesson is reminding us that love is our only goal. And because we are love, our only goal is really the recognition of our self, our identity. The underlying desire in all of us is to return to love, to return home to ourself, to be as we were created. The sense of emptiness and longing for something more that everyone in this world feels comes from believing that we have separated from our identity, our source. If we listen to the ego's thought system, we will search for a false identity in all kinds of meaningless forms that never satisfy because the ego's motto is seek and do not find. The ego knows that when we do find and accept our true identity, it will be the ego's end. By the grace of God, we have another voice in our mind that directs us truly to where we will find our heart's desire. We will find love. We will find ourself. We have been accustomed to listening to the ego's directives. Now we need to retrain our minds to listen to the voice that leads us on the path to true and lasting happiness. To do this mind training, we need to practice being mindful of our level of peace. And with this mindfulness, we need to practice turning over every thought that is less than peaceful to the Holy Spirit. At the end of chapter five, it gives us a prayer to use when we feel less than peaceful. I must have decided wrongly because I'm not at peace. I made the decision myself, but I can also decide otherwise. I want to decide otherwise because I want to be at peace. I do not feel guilty because the Holy Spirit will undo all the consequences of my wrong decision if I will let him. I choose to let him by allowing him to decide for God, for me. I will practice this today. Thank you, everybody. May each one of the love and support that I have felt this whole week uh, coming from all of you. It was just, it was miraculous. I love you all so much. Thank, Thank you, you, Linda. Thank you so much. And, and I'm holding you in my prayers still. Thank and your you. family. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. And yeah, thank you. Blessings so to you at this time. You're in, you're in our hearts and in our thoughts. Yeah, mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Blessings, Linda. Yeah. Blessings, Linda. Blessings to you all. Thank you. I love you. And to you too, Phil. Thanks, everyone. Love you all. Thanks, Phil. Yes. 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 Thanks, Mary. Thank you. See you all next week. Bye. Bye.